Welcome to Amusement Sparks. I don't know why my hand's up. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna do that. <laughs> I like I wave. Giving you a hey high guys. five. Woo! <laughs> I like to do one false start every time. It really sets the mood. Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> Welcome to Amusement Sparks, the theme park design show. I'm your host, Andrew Spawn, and with me today are the amazing ladies of Starship Therapies. Uh, if that, if you guys haven't heard the podcast, it's incredible. You should really go download it right now. Uh, you can even pause this show to do so. That's totally fine. Starship Therapies. Um, but it stars... Our very own Kirk and Spock here. How would you describe it exactly? You guys are much better at describing your show than I am. Okay. Um, hi, I, I am the Kirk of the Starship Therapies. My name is Justine Mastin, LMFT, writer, researcher, and I I love to be the captain of this ship. Um, <laughs> but I will... I mean, wouldn't you say that you love to be the captain of all ships? Yes, especially oh. Destiel. I want to be the captain <laughs> of that ship. Um, but I will cede to my uh, co-pilot for description of the show because she's just so much better at it. Oh. Wow. Um, thank you. So first, <laughs> I'm going to introduce myself. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with our podcast, my name is Larissa Garski. I am also a licensed marriage and family therapist, but most importantly, I am the Spockian first officer. Um, and our po podcast is... It's kind of like you think I would be better at this. You really Yeah, would. I really I really thought you were <laughs> going to be better at it, so I'm just going to go ahead and take the helm right on back. Uh, what we do is we explain self-help and psychological concepts in fun and exciting ways using the framework of our favorite fandoms. And it's a very easy easy listen. Like I already am interested in in mental health and relationships and all that stuff, but putting the pop culture lens on it, the fandom lens on it, makes it so much more easy to get into and easy to relate to. And even for people in my life who I want to talk about like mental health stuff with, your show gives me an easier access point into that. Even though we already have that shared interest in common, it just makes it feel more like, you know, an acceptable conversation. Because sometimes it can be hard to broach that, that subject of talking mm -hmm. about a relationship or talking about mental health issues or whatever just in general but bringing up a podcast mm -hmm. that talks about pop culture makes it really easy like you know water cooler level just very simple conversation it's really fun mm -hmm. a fun way to access those more complex and more deep concepts easily i, I love your guys show it's fantastic oh thank you so well, much you. That's, that's exactly why we made it yeah do you do you have give a favorite topic uh i don't that we've think covered? so i know i'm putting you on the spot on your no, own that's show. a great question Hmm. I liked the grief episode a lot. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. It, Where not that I I've gone. My soul. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. It was a great soul. <laughs> and we did like exercise. we did like multiple stops because we were both getting verklempt. Right. But <laughs> but I mean that made it easy as a listener too because because with a podcast usually the listener is kind of going through the same things that you are at the same time. Like, mm -hmm. You know, it's like a conversation. Um, where the listeners just kind of around along for the ride. So considering their comfort is nice. Like, hey, let's just slow down for a second, take a little break. Um, yeah, no, it's it's a great show, and I think you guys are handle it very tactfully. I would say. Thank yeah, you. I thank you. Sure. No, it's great. It's definitely great, especially anyone who's like, I, I don't know, teaching a uh, class that kind of includes these subjects. This would be a, like a very nice uh, tone for an educational context as well you know, relating it to pop culture and making it so it's not just heavy um, with, like, kind of faceless examples. You know, it's like, oh, it's like on that show, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. Yeah. It's like a Supernatural when this happened or what mm -hmm. Riverdale when that happened, whatever. Mm -hmm. And there's, like, there's, like, real whimsy to it, right? Which I know is yes. one of the captain's favorite words. <laughs> um, and, and we're kind of, like, we're kind of, like, talking around it. But I think, like, let's dive right in. Like, it's whimsy. And it's also this idea that when we think about mental health and therapy, there's often this idea that, well, we, get our, we better strap on our boots yeah. and dive in because it's going to be, like, hard and painful. And it is going to be some of that, right? But it can also be fun and light and silly. Mm hmm a hundred percent. And and with so many of these issues, it's something that you live with, not necessarily 24-7, but I don't know, 18-7, let's say, um, where it's not, <laughs> you're not just depressed during the sad times of your life. You know, you can be depressed mm -hmm. during all times of your life. So having kind of that up and down within that topic, mm -hmm. it's perfect. I, I don't know. It prepares you for the real world, I think. 
I'm, I'm really excited about the topic and I'm really excited about working with you guys. And I just, I think it's going to be a great uh, episode. Yeah. Oh, we're, we're always, we're always excited to run our mouths about fandom. So. <laughs> <laughs> Most excellent. Uh, so for this episode of Amusement Sparks, we're going to be designing yet another theme park. Uh, it'll be, of course, unique. And it is a topic that's unlike anything else we've ever covered for the show. Um, we're going to be doing Riverdale and the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, which are two shows that mm-hmm. I love. If the listener has not heard seen them yet, please track them down. They're really, really good. I actually have gone on record before saying that I wasn't excited about Riverdale because the oh. tone was a huge departure from the original Archie comics and like sure. the intended demographic. Mm-hmm. But I think that's fine. I don't think anyone who grew up reading Archie is really watching the CW. You know, it's it's a totally different <laughs> audience. No, no, it's on Netflix. <laughs> no, you're right. Well. You're right. And I, I do think that it's they're aiming for, I, I don't know, it's kind of like, it's just a different audience. It's a different show. It's it's a way better show, I would say, than the original Archie comics. But sure. I love those connections. Maybe like to your point, though, like as I'm hearing you talk about audience, I find myself wondering like, what is, like when the writers sit in their writer's room and they're like, we're going to write this for our audience. I find myself wondering like, what is their audience? What do they yeah. envision their audience being, right? Because some of their stuff is so random and there's all kinds of genre mashups and it's mm-hmm. i'd be curious to hear from them what what they think they're audi- or who they think their audience is oh see i don't think they care about their audience i think the writer's <laughs> room is full of people my age who are just dying to give work to their favorite 90s actors and they're like okay how can we write roles for these and adults? Kelly Ripa. Let's not forget Kelly Ripa. Because she's, I'm because she's married to, to everyone's BFF. Mark Consuelos? Did I get uh-huh. his name right? Yep. Yes. You got his name right. Wow. Yeah. Um, I'm really excited. It also reminds me that back in the day, I used to love the two of them on whatever soap opera they were on. Guiding Light. Our lives. General they were Hospital. on Guiding Light. I used to watch Guiding Light. Mm, there we go. See, yep. all kinds of people love Riverdale. <laughs> Andrew's already having feelings about inviting us. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not true at all. I prefer to have a guest who's an expert somewhere that I'm not so that uh, we can have some synergies and kind of bounce like ideas off each other. So it works out. I'm not a huge fan of soap operas, but hey, everybody's... I mean, it's good to have I someone mean, do it. Not anymore. I, not anymore. I was like 10. Okay. I didn't know anything. Uh, <laughs> I didn't know <laughs> Back when I was 10 and I knew nothing and I was ill and I didn't want to go to school, I would watch Kelly Ripa and her husband. (laughs) I mean, I guess I get that when you're a kid and you're like, oh, this is a thing for adults. I want to see what this is about. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like that. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Relatable. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Um, Okay. So the but on that same topic, sorry, I get with with Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. um, I feel like it could be kind of for the same audience who watched Sabrina the Teenage Witch, the Nickelodeon show. Agreed. But not people who read the original comics, maybe. I don't know, just it makes sense to do kind of a reboot of something people are nostalgic for from the 90s because mm-hmm. it's, you know, they're having kids now and it's like there's still at least young people who are like watching TV. Whereas, you know, RT Comics debuted in 1939. I don't think <laughs> the original audience is, has a Netflix account, for example. But I don't know. I, Whatever it's it come, it came out really cool. I like that they can reference this really old source material uh, in a totally new and fresh way. Like I I really like reboots that are a big departure, but I generally expect them to be at least aimed at a sort of similar audience and be in a similar genre. But I think Riverdale is a pretty big departure, and so is Sabrina from the original. You know, it's much more serious than the original comics. Yeah. yeah, I I I love how dark they both are. That mm-hmm. just that that feeds my soul. Um, if if I were to describe my aesthetic, it would be creepy, cute, yeah. and really that's what I like in all things. Yeah, mm-hmm. would, I'm with would you, you on that? Would you agree with that, Larissa? Oh no, I would I would definitely agree that that is your aesthetic. <laughs> <laughs> yep, creepy, cute with like a dash. Well, three dashes of Hello Kitty. <laughs> I like that. And Hello Kitty's been through some sort of goth phases. And uh, have you seen a Gretzico? I have it's... not yet. I mean, I know her, of her existence, but I have not yet watched that. Yeah, it's it's an interesting character. It's another Sanrio character, but she's just like into karaoke of like 
death metal, but she's just like an office worker, sweet little fox lady. Mm-hmm. It's really cute. Um, but yeah, it's it adorable. <laughs> there's a good combination there between like you know the darkness and the cuteness. I think for show. Sure. Uh, mm-hmm. Cool. So these two shows are set in the same universe, and so I'm assuming mm-hmm. if we're gonna make a theme park. It's gonna encompass that sort of Venn diagram overlapping space. Is that what you're hoping so, for? So, so what we were picturing. Yes. Um, yes. Picture a riverboat. <laughs> <laughs> Because we couldn't help but talk about this because we knew we were going to be on the show. And so we did bounce around a few ideas. Uh, awesome. And during... there's nothing sexier than preparation. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's someone's opinion. Um, so we know, <laughs> we know that Riverdale and Greendale are separated by the Sweetwater River. And Real. so we picture, yes, we yeah. picture... A riverboat ride that separates mm-hmm. Riverdale and Greendale. Mm-hmm. So yes, it's one theme park, but it's it's separated by the Sweetwater Riverboat. Right. That's, that's a cool idea. I really like that. And they kind of can explain why there's a little bit of a schism between the two and not, you know, there's definitely like two different high schools. I feel like they're probably in two different counties. I don't know for sure, but they definitely feel like they're separated and that's yeah, a way of for representing sure. that. Yeah. Where yeah. even like your map is going to be divided of your your theme park, right? Beautiful. And we and we still don't even really know what decade Chilling Adventures of Sabrina is supposed to be set in. Yeah, that's no. true. So maybe you're crossing oh, yeah. not just space but time as well when you take the Sweetwater Riverboat. We'd want like the the conductor, the riverboat driver. We'd mm-hmm. want that person to. They're say captains. That. They're captains, <laughs> just <laughs> like me. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, that's cool. And then you can do like a jungle cruise type of experience. <laughs> uh, maybe not. It's a little bit more dark. Than Except than it's got it's got serpents. It's, right. It's got Southside serpents just in the water right. jumping out at you. <laughs> well, that and I, I think it'd be important that like at some point there would be a way to maybe not like drink the actual river water that you're you know going through on the riverboat, but you need to get some sort of version of it. Because then that's how we will have actors who would be on the riverboat who would be passing as guests. They would have mm. seizures, like season three. Ooh. Oh. oh, yeah, this is important. Andrew, How f- are you caught up with Riverdale? Yes, but not with Sabrina. Okay. Right? So, okay. Isn't that weird? I know that's kind of weird, but I was more of a fan of Riverdale first, which I guess makes sense because it came out first. But mm. yeah, I, I really love Sabrina. I... I might even like it more than Riverdale, although I like both a lot, but I really like the creepiness factor that Sabrina's got going on. But I just haven't seen every episode yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm going to be yeah. spoilering Larissa a little bit. She's only halfway through the third season of Riverdale. Cool. Well, I mean, this is, I, ha- I have to live with my life choices. And, <laughs> yeah. and you should and be this punished me... for what you've done. Yeah. Right. This is me <laughs> taking responsibility and ownership. <laughs> I, I rarely ever mind spoilers because i'm still going to enjoy the content anyway and i always go into it it, having my expectations of what will probably happen in the story so i I, it's it's all good whatever yeah spoil away absolutely i'm gonna watch it anyway you know yeah Mm -hmm. so uh, some of the theme parks that we do on this show are like immersive in meaning that the park guest takes the role of like an actual person in the universe would you want to do it that way or is this kind of um a little bit more traditional where it's it's like there's not necessarily a character role you're walking through it's just like mm-hmm. you are a visitor to this place and you don't actually impact the story at all or have a you're more taking a tour through an existing world we we want to be we want to be immersive oh, yeah yes. cool mm-hmm. I, I think that that's what i would have expected out of these two series where it seems like mm-hmm. Any any minor character can suddenly be thrust into the limelight if they discover something new or, you know, a new plot turn comes. And it's like, oh, OK, I didn't think that character was going to be in the show anymore. Like, I don't know. I, I like the idea that you never know where the next big plot point is going to come from. Mm-hmm. It's true. Yeah. Like tall boy. You never know. And tall boy is <laughs> going to come back. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's your favorite. Although I would favorite? thought your favorite was like, Papa Poutine as a name. Favorite name. name, like I love Papa Poutine, but then <laughs> it's Gerald Petit. <laughs> Wait, is that his name? 
Yes, his name is Gerald. Oh. His, his given name is Gerald Petit. But he is no. known by the serpents by his name of Tallboy. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> so yes, along those lines, rather than having people pick a character, what we were envisioning is people would pick a group. Yeah, sure, like a so, class type thing, like yep. a Southside Serpent, or yeah, mm-hmm. like a cool. Ghoulie. I like that. Be what a gargoyle, yeah. witch and warlock for the the Greendale peeps, and then we had just like you could be a regular Riverdale kid, you could be an yeah. average Greendale kid, or there's the Pretty Poisons. Wow. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah, you could join a gang. Yeah, or... I mean, that's pretty much what it is. <laughs> you just join a gang. Less threatening about it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and a then, gang. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's a great idea. Like, I could see that. I, I don't know. I like being able to explore different uh, perspectives as you go through the story. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Because a lot of the show is a gray area. You know, there's no, like, real white knights in this series that I can think of. Even the ones who, like, in the first season you think are going to be completely heroic. Right. There's always there's right. always is a point where they have to, you know, come to grips with something that they've done and it's maybe not what you expected them to do or not what you I don't know. It's it's cool. I like that the characters are all realistic and everyone has fall flaws flaw flaws? Mm-hmm. Flaws, flaws and flaws. faults. Mm-hmm. I've got my own <laughs> flaws here. Flops. Um <laughs> But yeah, yeah, uh I like that about this. So so from a certain perspective, people can appear heroic and from a certain perspective they can seem diabolic. So I really love that. It's a great well, idea. Right, if, if you're a South Side Serpent, then the North Siders are the enemy. If you're a North Sider, maybe the South Side Serpents are an enemy. It's all relative. And I, yes. I love relativism. Social yeah. constructionism. I will not take this podcast off course. <laughs> <laughs> really? Because it, it feels like that's what's about to happen, sir. You're the captain. <laughs> But we're we are just... socially constructing reality by creating this amusement park. Ooh, this is so meta. This is great. <laughs> I love this. Okay, so for those of you who listen to to both both of our, our podcasts, right, you probably are familiar with social constructionism, aka the Westworld construct, which is just the idea that we as human beings construct most of our reality, right? So things like gender norms, religion, um, professional jobs and expectations, all of that we we tend to take for granted as if they were sort of like invalid constructs or like invalid rules, but they're not. We created them, and that means that we can break them and create new stuff. Cool. Mm-hmm. All right, so I've really committed to taking a hard left turn there with you, Captain. So bring us back. Okay, I would be happy to. So what we envision here, if, <laughs> even though we know that Riverdale is in present day, but we don't know when Chilling Sabrina is, we, we just want a general 1950s type vibe. Mm-hmm. So very vintage vibe, meaning cell phones discouraged. And sure. any gamification that we do is all paper, pencil, and stickers. Oh, like, I love stickers. Like everyone know? has like a notebook or something. Yeah. Oh, yeah, like, yes. Yes. They have like art. Mm-hmm. Each of the different like subgroups has their own, you know, device. Cause I can't see the South Side Serpents carrying around like a bunch of school supplies, but like maybe they have <laughs> pins on their jackets or like pins on their book bag or something. Yeah. And that kind of denotes whatever. Hmm. Mm, yeah. Fascinating. I love oh, that's cool. Or badges. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yes. Well, and part of the theme park too that we envisioned was that um, you could decide to like solve mysteries because yeah. it like on in both shows, um, like you know, being a detective is an important part, and so you obviously need something to write your clues down in. Yeah. So, pencil, mm-hmm. paper, little bujos, you know, whatever works. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and then the I don't know the ghoulies can just like carry around knives and carve their messages into like trees or like a desk <laughs> perhaps we'd give them like wooden <laughs> wooden tablet <laughs> i mean everyone can carry a small notebook in their pocket and still look cool well but their but their um their pens could look like little little razors little, little knives. switch blades <laughs> yeah little switch oh, blades perfect. Perfect. and then when you, like, when you like hit the button they would like pop out like a switch blade but oh it'd just gosh. really be a pen <laughs> <laughs> i mean I don't think there will be any real like hardcore ruffians who will be going to this theme park or if they are visiting the park, they're okay with playing detective a little bit and carrying around a pencil. I don't think that'll break the immersion too much. (laughs) (laughs) 
You have to suspend your disbelief that your character would carry around a pencil, okay? Just the old bit. No, that's cool. I think we could we could bend that. We can mm-hmm. bridge that gap. Mm-hmm. Cool. Okay, so when you come into the park, you mm-hmm. choose your affiliation. Mm-hmm. And then what? Do you just kind of go explore a town? How do you start out? Yeah, well, so as soon as you walk in, you, of course, see the iconic sign that says, Welcome to Riverdale, the town with pep. Right. So cute. <laughs> oh, Archie Comics. Archie Comics. Mm-hmm. And then I love that flavor. That it's just like right? so cute and sweet. And then there's like all these weird, creepy things going on on the fringe of it. I love mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Creep mm-hmm. hashtag hashtag creepy cute. Yes. Right. That's a good hashtag. I wonder if it's out there. Probably. Probably. It's... Oh well. <laughs> if not. It's mine. <laughs> Yours is <laughs> <pointed> first. <laughs> there you go. So uh, we enter through Riverdale, and are we free to explore around, or is there like a guide showing us around the town? Larissa, thoughts? <laughs> um, that's a great question. I did not envision a guide because I feel yeah. like people who are going to our park are people who are like rabble rousers. Mm-hmm. sure and they, they want to like <laughs> do it on their own but i guess what i would say is depending upon what group you're in like you you're going to be sort of like encouraged to go in a specific direction yeah. right so like if you're going like the witch warlock greendale kid route you kind of immediately need to get on the sweetwater river boat yeah because <laughs> sure. that's gonna that's gonna take you to um either greendale high or what's the I'm forgetting what the, the Academy of Unseen Arts. Yes, the Academy mm-hmm. of Unseen Arts. Mm-hmm. It's a great title. Mm-hmm. That's cool, and I like the idea of having little uh, graffiti tags or just signage saying like Riverdale High this way. Then there's like a serpent on a door over there, and then there's some kind of sigil or something. I don't know, like going out into the woods to go to yes, the, the riverboat. Ooh, like a video game. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. and find yeah. clues with your sigils. Yeah. Markers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like open world, but it's definitely if you're paying attention, it'll kind of like point you where you should go. Yeah. And or it's where like you, diegetic. Mm-hmm. Diegetic sign posting, something like that. Well Sweet. Said. Oh, that's awesome. Very cool. Um, in Riverdale, what kind of attractions would you guys want to put in there? Like, what are the the parts that you would really love to be able to explore and see in real life? Oh, uh, we. Uh, we made a whole list. I, I figured did. you did. Yeah, I'm trying to pull parts of that list out. Yeah. Um, Justine, would you like to go ahead with the second yeah, part on the yeah, list? I, I would be happy to. Um, what I will start by saying is that I'm not a big rides person. It was kind of a stretch for me to even get down with the Sweetwater River boat. Yeah, I had to do some like real serious pitching for about 15 minutes to convince <laughs> that this was a good idea. What I love at an amusement park is immersive experiences where I just get to be in the space. Like in Wizarding World of Harry Potter, I yes. I could have given two cents about whether or not we ever reached the ride, but I loved at Gringotts where you could just walk through Gringotts or where mm. you could, you know, just walk through the castle and see the moving portraits. And like, that's what I loved. Yes. So... So I want to go to Pops, which is a real working diner with right. actor servers. Yes. Yes. And Le bon would also be fully functional. And you'd need some sort of password to get into Le bon Of course. Well, and I also think that, like, you could decide if, like, did you want to, like, you know, be served a strawberry milkshake or did you want to be a worker at Pops Diner? And if so, there would be a costume that you could then put on. Because oh, if we're going to go like, immersive, like, why not go all in? And then yeah. at Le Bonne you could also sing if you wanted to. And I guess we'd hope that you knew how to sing. <laughs> I love this idea. <laughs> I, I'm sure the you're shocked. You <laughs> <laughs> My vocal exercises awesome. will finally <laughs> come in handy. Mm-hmm. No, that's cool. I mean, it could just be... <laughs> karaoke like that's a real thing we have in our culture for people who aren't necessarily the best singers but want to perform we've got a way of making that happen that's Mm -hmm. awesome but it would need to be like torch song like specifically 1940s sure 20s to 40s sure speak easy appropriate 
karaoke. Well, and I think to like Andrew's point, oh. we could do that because it'll be karaoke. But then when you look at the songs, like it's only going to be from that yeah, series of decades, curated. you know, sure. like Hit Me Baby One More Time, maybe a great song. Um, <laughs> but it's not going to be is. an option at, at Le Bon Oui. <laughs> cool. No, I love that. That's great. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then, of course, I mean, I could just list off absolutely everything in Riverdale <laughs> because we pretty much wrote it all down, we did. Uh, you know, but let's like hit the highlights. Right. Highlights. Like, we were, yeah. we were the highlights. particularly excited about having a football game mm-hmm. between Riverdale and Greendale, um, mm-hmm. like at two different times of day. And yeah. of course, you could like be a part of this this football game if you so chose. Um, wow. and then what, there was going to be like a motorcycle ride for the serpents and the ghoulies and also a drag racing station. <laughs> cool. I mean, that's just a roller coaster, right? Like, yeah, that's a pretty easy theme for it. I love that. That's amazing. And then something spooky at the Sisters of Quiet Mercy. Mm-hmm. Yes. Wow. Like, do you want to do like a, an escape room type of thing where you're like Ooh. a patient slash inmate? Because it is yes. a pretty creepy place. Yes. Yeah. That's because perfect. Some of my favorite escape rooms are the ones where it's like either a jail cell or like a place where someone was trapped for a while. And so there's mm-hmm. like little, you know, scratches and etchings and clues and ramblings. I really love that that stuff. So sure. Yeah, I sweet. mean, what I would love is yes. if we had some area, perhaps in Fox Forest or the bunker, or the Sisters of Quiet Mercy, where people actually play griffins and gargoyles. Sure. Cool. That would be good. Well, and I'm thinking, like, you could have that, but then, like, going off of the sca- escape room idea, if you are attending our theme park as a large group, and, you know, we'd have to get waivers and such, but one <laughs> member of your group w- would be um, taken in, a, uh-huh. in as gentle a way as possible and they would find <laughs> themselves in the Sisters of Quiet Mercy. So then they would be gone. The remaining friend group would be charged with like, you know, trying to figure out what happened to their friend and how to find them. And then their friend is in the in skate room of the Sisters of Quiet Mercy. And it's like, are they going to break themselves out first? Like Betty Cooper? Cool. Or are they going to need to get saved? Mm-hmm. That's awesome. And Love then that can, that can be kind of your your timer on the escape room because being in an escape room mm-hmm. for like two hours would be exhausting like yeah, one hour maximum so mm-hmm. just kind of time it where your group of five people will definitely be able to finish their challenge and get to you within an mm-hmm. hour that no that's wonderful i love that mm-hmm. that's so mm-hmm. cool and then the the group of five can be like putting together clues and finding i don't know the abandoned car in the woods or whatever like finding some right some things along a path that mm-hmm. might help them find their way to the sisters of quiet mercy maybe mm-hmm. oh, yes yeah. that's really cool i like that and you could reuse that same challenge for the different sort of groups of people the subgroups it's not just riverdale high students that would go that route maybe because you know anyone who's i don't know deemed to not be mentally well could be taken there i don't know you could you, you, could use that you are unwell we're taking you from your group <laughs> i mean i i'm not saying that uh, betty's sister needed to go there by any means you know like it's not like she was actually no. diagnosed with any real issues or anything it was just kind of someone wanted her put away so mm-hmm. it's kind of creepy there's like a cool i don't know conspiracy yeah, theories so maybe it are they be still like conspiracies if they're true mm, well maybe <laughs> But I do like, this. so like, you know, when you get your little notebook or your passport or whatever, maybe it says in there that you're marked and, yes. and you don't know what that means uh-huh. and it's all randomized. Right. And like, it's, so it's not always going to be the Riverdale kid. Sometimes mm-hmm. it's going to cool. be the ghoulie. Wait, I, I literally hadn't thought about this, but we should have, you know, as you, if you go with a group of four people, mm-hmm. each person, do they have to decide on the same group to be in or could they be a mixed we can be mixed. Party. Yeah, why not? I think the mixed party makes more sense in the, the setup of the show. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. It's more interesting when not all the same characters are the same person, you know, when they're right. a little bit more diverse. So, no, that's that's awesome. And that unlocks um, some more interesting cross-pollination, I think. Mm-hmm. If there are certain ways that only a ghoulie can solve this challenge because they have whatever tool. Uh, oh, I love that. really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like yeah. they have the ability of breaking windows or something or I, I don't know there's all kinds of things you can do like that um yeah magic hairpin have like a school id that's right 
<laughs> yeah, magic hairpin. That's great. <laughs> yeah, and they can just be little, uh, like f- like a key fob, basically, like a little, you mm-hmm. know, wand from the Wizarding World of Harry Potter, that type of thing. Yeah. You're not physically actually breaking the window no. if you have that ability. You just have a cool brick that uh is like a remote control for Windows <laughs> or something. <laughs> I love this, and I think we could do we could do a sister thing over in Greendale at mm-hmm. uh, the the Spellman Mortuary. Mm-hmm. Because that you would also be an escape room situation, or because yeah. yeah, you could get trapped in a in a casket or something, and you're like you wake up and you're in the little oh, yeah. embalming room or whatever, and you I don't know you're locked mm-hmm. in there for some reason. With God, why can't I think of his name right now? What's Ambrose. his name? Because Ambrose. Ambrose. Yes. I love that guy. Love Ambrose. Or you an just... animatronic Ambrose, an Ambrose matronic. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he'd need to be very lifelike. Like I'm talking like Westworld level lifelike. Um, yeah. If if we couldn't get that, then I would be okay with like having actors who would like be there and of course never break character. No, never, never, yeah. never. never. Um, because like, do you because I do think it'd be fun in the in the the dark arts academy. Why can't the academy of unseen arts? Is that it? We've been getting it out for you. I know you did, but for some reason my brain is just like not letting me find it on the note sheet. So I'll just keep getting it wrong, and you can keep correcting me because <laughs> that's, that's love. Um. Aww, <laughs> wow, that's a powerful statement right there. I know yeah. your faults or your flaws or whatever I said earlier, <laughs> and I'm just gonna keep helping pick you up. Let's keep going. <laughs> Yeah, I love that. Um, and so I think we were thinking it'd be fun if someone was there to like teach a class on yeah. some particular like dark arts activity, and then you do a, a summoning spell later or something. Do you think that those abilities that you might learn in Greendale would help you later on as your party crosses over into Riverdale for the evening? Or is there like a point where your abilities that you learned at Riverdale High will be helpful over in Greendale? Or do you think they're more... You use these I, skills in this area, those skills in that area. I think. Your fingers and up. I, <laughs> and, and I think Larissa and I are on the same wavelength. Okay. I think Gosh, I hope so. Otherwise, it's going to be is, real embarrassing. That as soon as you enter the Sweetwater Riverboat, mm-hmm. that your device doesn't work on the other side. I like that, too, because what, what I was thinking with that is, uh, it is kind of cool in a way that your path has an impact on your entire day. But it's also kind of nice if if you're kind of tired from the morning's activities, you didn't like that that much, you get a fresh start and you get to start over at zero again. You yes. know, earning learning new abilities or whatever or taking a new character path maybe. You get mm-hmm. to choose like, you know, I didn't like being the bad guy over there. I'm going to be the good guy over here. Or, I mean, mm-hmm. it's all a gray area, of course, but I was talking about the societal uh, stereotypes there. That's cool. I mm-hmm. like that. Is that where your head was at, Larissa? Or were you going somewhere else? No, no, that was where my head was at. Okay, great. <laughs> you got it. That's yes. awesome. Mind meld. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you guys been doing your podcast, by the way? Just a year. Just a year. Cool. That's started, awesome. Yeah, we started last May. Uh huh. We're currently on hiatus. Yeah, but it was a planned hiatus, right? We're, it was we're a not planned scared. Hiatus. Yes, it yeah. was. <laughs> no, no, really we're definitely a- coming back. <laughs> That's awesome. And you've done a lot of episodes in a in one year. I mean, it's pretty impressive. Thank you. That's awesome. Thank sure. You. Well, that's it great. was it took a it took a lot. Uh, yeah. Podcasts are our our work. Who knew? <laughs> I mean I mean you say that, but I think that like when we embarked on this journey of the podcast, we were like, this will be great. This will be a fun activity for us to do together in our copious free time. <laughs> <laughs> and it will just be fun. And it will be about whimsy, but also work, and it'll be great. And then I think we got to the end, and we were like, oh, my God, we're so tired. <laughs> <laughs> well, what do you think is the hardest part? Is it the editing of it? Is that what, what really bogs it down? Well, Brian does that, so he'd have to answer. Oh, really? Oh, snap. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's yeah. Nice. Praise, praise Satan uh, that Brian is willing <laughs> to do that, you know? I've been really working on trying to say that more and more casually. Like that was like so shocking and fun for me in the first episode of Sabrina when they're just like, right? Pretty safe. Just <laughs> casually like, 
That's cool. <laughs> I loved it. Mm-hmm. I have started like weaving into session, encouraging people to like when they need to like set a boundary and say no, I'll be like, and that's when you say not today, Satan. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of Greendale, mm-hmm. we did come up with a ride that's an actual ride in Greendale. Yes, we cool. did. Oh and it's God. the it's the mystery that. mine ride. Okay, cool. <laughs> And this is like a special shout out for all you like 90s, 90s kids and babies who remember like the OG Camp Snoopy from the Mall of America in (laughs) Minneapolis, Minnesota. It was. Yeah. Right. So there was like a ride that was called the Mystery Mine Ride. And it was it was not good. Right. (laughs) It, It was really like you strapped into a seat and it was supposed to be like 3D and it was a it was a younger time, um, but our, <laughs> that's true. But we only mystery, had two Ds then. We did <laughs> only had two Ds, and so like your seat would like very creakily move back and forth, and occasionally you'd be sprayed by some kind of mist. Um, <laughs> so this will be like an exact recreation of that experience, except with Satan <laughs> and the doors to hell. That's right. Oh man. So this would be a roller coaster type thing, or do you want it to be more 4D theater? Ooh. Combination? I mean, I, I would prefer 4D theater because I don't like rides, which I'm yeah. so sorry to your listeners. It's quite <laughs> all right. It, it is more about the immersion and more about the mm-hmm. I don't know, next generation. I don't think how fast your coaster goes is as big of a deal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. And there should definitely be, obviously, demons who like jump out at you on cool. the mystery ride um yeah. and somehow there needs to be real fire <laughs> I, I, don't, again, I don't i, I don't know how we would do that but there would need yeah. to be like real fire right <laughs> that's definitely we can put that down in the notes that's someone else's department <laughs> figure out how, <laughs> how to get the fire in, get involved there mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. That, that's cool i the part i like about the mine is um i forget who it is but when someone's like a little kid they get lost in the mine and they like find the devil Ooh. down there is that harvey it's Harvey. Mm-hmm. It? Yeah, 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 mm-hmm. yeah. Because that's why he didn't want to work in the mine. Anyway, mm-hmm. that that was such a cool, like, spooky experience. If yeah. you're going through like, sort of a corn maze type thing, but it's mines, like, that's way creepier, I think. Because worst case yeah. scenario in a corn maze, you just run straight through the corn and you're at your car soon. <laughs> like, you can't do that in a mine. <laughs> a lot scarier. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a hundred. And there could be the devil down there. You never know. He could, and it makes me wonder if, like, if if you and your, like, group of people so choose, if you want to, like, play some sort of, like, master version of this theme park that would, of course, be, um, it, it would span both Riverdale and Greendale, that, like, you would eventually find out that the person that you're hunting for trying to capture in Riverdale is, in fact, the same person that you're trying to hunt for and capture in Greendale. That would be cool. the big reveal. Mm. Oh, that's awesome. I don't know who that would be yet. But well, the, the gargoyle friend. king, who would also be Satan. Mm-hmm. Oh, <laughs> spoiler alert! Oh my gosh, <laughs> oh, revealed yet? Oh, that's awesome. Oh, hmm. yeah. Uh, this this for, is so great. <laughs> for the the uh, sort of monstery bad guys. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, in Riverdale, the part where they're going through the corn maze and there's that big scarecrow monster chasing after them. You remember that? No. Uh, no? In no. Riverdale? Oh, I meant to say Sabrina, of course. Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, this, this makes so much more sense now. Uh, like, yeah, it makes more sense that. in Greendale, doesn't it? Uh, <laughs> for that part, she has like a little uh, puppet type thing that is the scarecrow that she's like controlling. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I, when, I, when I first saw that, I was like, man, that'd be cool as like an asynchronous, uh, not asynchronous, yes. what's the word? Asymmetric yes. game. Yeah, mm-hmm. it'd be just cool if if the big bad monster isn't just like an employee just jumping out and scaring you, but like I don't know, someone somewhere no, is great. like command or like and coming it, up with it, a strategy. It, yeah, or even if like we would have some because we would need to run different permutations of the mystery, obviously, because otherwise it'd be like it'd be a real one hit wonder of a theme park. But <laughs> amazing, amazing, right. but then but then very anticlimactic for, the first, day. when pe- for mm-hmm. the first day when people wanted to come back for day two. Um, that like <laughs> right. one of it could be that someone in your group just, or someone who attends that day gets this doll. 
and they don't really know what it is and they just move it around and they're moving this doll around it's making whoever is this villain do all kinds of crazy but the person with the doll doesn't know wow Mm. no that's super cool and it it could be kind of abstracted in a way like Mm. i don't this is just a random example but if it's like the bad guy is just like a bookmark and they're putting him in different places in the book or something so it's a little bit more like one step removed from just putting them somewhere else in the dollhouse and then the bad Mm -hmm. guy's in that room Mm -hmm. um it could be on a bigger scale too where it's is the bad guy in riverdale right now or in greendale right now it depends on Mm -hmm. where this little chess piece is on the board or whatever Mm -hmm. that's that's really cool and then you would just have some require that person to go back to that space and change the configuration a few times to kind of move make some some progress so that bad guy's not just standing there in the middle of riverdale all day (laughs) you know (laughs) Add a little bit just more. Just like right in the center of the football field. Yeah, <laughs> <Just> good point. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that'd be really cool if uh, there's pre-scripted events that happen when this bad guy's in that location. Here's the mystery that, that starts to happen. That's a super cool idea. It, do you think there's one chosen person for the entire day who moves the bad guy piece? Mm. Or would it be there's one in each group in the place where they move the bad guy to determines where they are headed to next on their journey? Or... How does it work? What what I'm picturing mm-hmm. is, you know, when you check in, when you get all of your supplies, mm-hmm. you get the the doll or the bookmark or whatever we decide it is. Mm-hmm. And when that person leaves the park, the I mean, yeah, they get to take whatever they get to take with them. But, you know, our sensors know that that doll has left mm-hmm. the park and it's time sure. for a Someone new doll. Someone else gets it. Yeah. Cool. I like that. That works. Uh, the thing I was getting hung up on was like, Let's say there's, I don't know, eight locations on each side of the river. Mm-hmm. And if your party goes to Pop's Diner and there's no, no bad guy there, is it just mm-hmm. a regular day? Or should there be like a regular exciting experience going on there? Mm-hmm. And then there's like the next level one when the actual big bad is in that location at the same time. Sure. It switches to a different track, a more intense experience. I think maybe I think maybe like the second idea, because I, I definitely would envision this park being... A, a little bit like um kind of like the way like breath of the wild legend of zelda does it where you there is like the master quest of course but then there are all these really amazing sort of mini games or shorter stories that you can follow through and play that yeah. are just as rewarding if not as rewarding as the as the main game so like maybe you don't maybe you're not interested in figuring out who the big bad is like maybe you're going to go for this immersive experience and like I don't know, work a full day at Pop's Diner. Um, <laughs> right? Learn how to before roller you, skate. Right. Before you go out and like like hook up with your boyfriend um, who's a ghoulie. I don't know. <laughs> Is there going to be like a little parking area that you just kind of go to with your bow and just make out and then like a serial killer comes and smacks on your window? And yes. I guess that's the after dark <laughs> experience. Yes. Mm-hmm. Pay sixty dollars to go to this theme park so you can make out with your husband. <laughs> All right, I would, could have stayed I home would and done that. that. <laughs> yeah, you would. You probably pay more than that. <laughs> I know that I would, especially especially for the Greendale side. I mean, they're both really cool, but yeah. I, I I don't know, man. I think maybe it's because I've seen so much Riverdale that I'm like, I want to learn more about this Sabrina lady. This side of the of the river is more mysterious because i haven't seen as much of it well and it's much more magic-y so that's part right. of it too i suppose and like lots of immersion Im- immersion that's no immersive like uh satanism so lots of different <laughs> satanic rituals you can be a part of you can be a part of like prepping for the satanic ritual <laughs> yeah. and like that that will like lead to something that's like i don't know maybe you have a better strawberry harvest and that's important to the riverdale people so they can have enough like strawberry milkshakes you know wow that's cute i really like that that was amazing it was (laughs) holy cow uh and And you could not the big bad but it's still important (laughs) yeah strawberry milkshakes are very important you're right um i love the idea too that your small group of people I don't know. I keep getting caught up on logistics a little bit, but I think this would be really interesting is if your party's progress throughout the theme park is being tracked. So Mm -hmm. like your party in the morning might help summon more powerful strawberries or whatever. And then (laughs) you go to pops for dinner. And when they know that your party is on the way, they switch out the sign that says 
the special of the day is strawberry milkshakes or whatever. Um, so it's not like that for everyone. It's just mm-hmm. once you've triggered this event, this mm-hmm. reward is unlocked for you at the next place. Or once you've escaped from this location, you now have access to that location. Like, it'd be relatively easy if there's like a set time when all the groups kind of rotate stations, so to speak, mm-hmm. um, to just kind of swap out the signs or switch out which monster is in here or have little changes where it's not the same experience every day. It's not a canned thing. It's like, which of these four cans are you going <laughs> to? Yeah. And I kind of like that. And I think you're right. We would need to have cues to kind of you keep people moving, you know, maybe they've been a yeah. pop steiner and it's going on three hours. Right. It's like, <laughs> right. Come on, friends. There needs to be more things to do. So that would be maybe when like the actor would come in and be like, oh, my God, you guys have to come to the woods. Like things are really going down between the serpents and the ghoulies. Right. And so like <laughs> you've been at Pops now for hours. You want to get up and go see that. And yeah. by getting them to get up and go, then you can switch out the signs for the strawberries. What? Mm-hmm. OK, that's amazing. And what if you could <laughs> stay in Pops for three hours, but like every hour on the hour, um, like a little newsboy comes by and like puts a new newspaper on the table or something Ooh. like and it's like oh okay I'm not really interested in this headline I'm just gonna say we're gonna stay at Pops and have dessert uh, uh-huh. sure and it, I mean that that could be like a diegetic way within Pops Diner I love to have it that or something yeah, changes good. on the specials board yeah. and it's like I don't know whatever that doesn't make as much sense but uh, I should have stopped for, after the first one I like <laughs> the idea of a diegetic reason for hey you guys might want to move here mm-hmm. if you're at mm-hmm. If you're making out in your car, the radio station might cut to a news bulletin about something. You know, there's been a break in at Riverside High or whatever. And you're like, oh, well, let's go see what that is about. Be cool. I love it. Yeah. I love all of I love this. It. Yes, <laughs> me too. So you guys had that incredible list. What else um, do we need to get to on, off that list? Well, for mm. me, the very most important part of all of this mm-hmm. is. Wow. Well, you'll see why I'm saying this. <laughs> the very most important part of all of this is to keep on the Riverdale side the way they name things. Oh, yes. This is vital to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's true. Go the on. five seasons, the American Excess card. Mm-hmm. Glamour J eggs. Oh, yes. <laughs> uh, Gotta I... get your Glamour J egg. <laughs> I just, I... As, as a narrative therapist, as someone who loves language, mm-hmm. the way that they take names and change them slightly, like instead of Game Boy, Game Lad. Game Lad. It's tied between Game Lad and Leopold and Loeb, Juvenile <laughs> Detention Center. What about Shankshaw Prison? That was amazing. <laughs> You're right. You're right. I, That's equally literally, as amazing. Larissa and I were texting each other over Shankshaw Prison. Uh. <laughs> I'm glad that you like those. That makes me happy. <laughs> oh, I just, I love them. And I would want to keep that going through the whole thing. If we yeah. create anything new. Oh, yes. Yeah. And you totally could. And mm-hmm. you could even pull out new things from the old comics that they haven't referenced in the show yet. Mm-hmm. You know, if we need to expand the world and we need to put bathrooms over by the woods over here for some reason. So let's find some building that was in the comics or whatever and we put it over there mm-hmm. that'd be kind of cool we continue that, like you said that that thread of of just that cute vibe that they have going in riverdale mm-hmm. where it's i don't know that really like sweet old-timey vibe from the comics but mm-hmm. through a more modern lens and i don't know it's it's a very beautiful town like it'd be mm-hmm. so cool to just spend time there it's really sweet yeah. what are some of your big moments larissa from uh, the, from our list I mean, what I remember when we were talking about this initially is I was, like, all about the haunted houses. <laughs> you um, were all about the haunted I, houses. I wanted to make everything a haunted house. And at one point, you were like, Larissa, now we're up to, like, 500 houses. They're going <laughs> to be on here. Um, <laughs> They're supposed to be chilling adventures, right? <laughs> I know. And this know. is haunted. And this is haunted. Right. So I think we, you said I needed to decide between either Thorn, Thornhill or Thistle House being haunted. So I would definitely mm. go with Thornhill. Yep. Um, and I think that if you wanted to like definitely be a villain, if you really wanted to go that route, Thornhill would be your 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 base camp, if you will. Cool. That's mm-hmm. awesome. And I think that we would I don't know how we would do this either, but I think it'd be fun if you could I mean making drugs sound so not family friendly. <laughs> doing science. Um, doing <laughs> science. Doing <laughs> science that would affect the <laughs> The neurochemistry. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 
candies. Uh, but no, we wouldn't do that. It would be more that like you would do things and it would do stuff like it would like dye people's tongues purple, right? And then huh. you would understand that if you were someone with a purple tongue, then you were like afflicted. And then part of like your quest would be then trying to figure out who like who made you afflicted and how do you get like the antidote to get your tongue back to its regular color or something. Wow. I like the idea of that. No, that's that's really cool. <laughs> I don't know quite how you unpurple your tongue, but maybe there's science, right? We'll figure it out. Science. Someone else will figure that out. (laughs) Or you just take something that dyes it sort of a reddish color. Yeah. Well, you could, again, this could be one of those things that you're assigned. Yes. Maybe maybe Mm -hmm. you open these things at certain times or they open themselves at certain times. And like you find that you have fizzle rocks or Mm -hmm. you have jingle jangle. I thought he was off the jangle. <laughs> oh, man. That was such a... I don't know how they said that on the set without laughing. The first episode when Jingle Jangle's in, introduced, oh. I was like, is this is this for real? Am I supposed to be scared of Jingle Jangle? Uh, oh, I man. Loved it. Oh, you know what we should have? And it just, it mm-hmm. just appeared to me. If we're going to make science, we should also make bejeweled collars. Like, there should be a bejeweled, bejeweled collar station. Oh, my God. That would be great. You know, like, instead of yes. wearing the mouse ears at Disneyland, you wear mm. your own bejeweled collar. Well, and, of course, we would have, like, a, we would have some, we would have the neighborhood where Archie and Betty live. And so you could go into Betty's home, and that would be the site of the making your bejeweled collar. <laughs> Aww. Yeah, it's nice to have like an arts and crafts at each station too. <laughs> no, that's really cool. I know, I would. Yeah, I would. That's really cute. And you could do it where, um, you know, this person you you pick up your artifact at the beginning, and it has all of these different compartments on it. Or it could be once you get to a new station, you're like dealt a new card or whatever. You know, someone reads Ooh. your tarot, and you just yeah. revealed one more card, and that signifies something. Oh, yeah, that's, that's great. It's cool. We should definitely have a tarot, st- a tarot station in yeah. the Chilling Adventure of Sabrina side. And I just remember Dorian Gray's oh, whatever, his yeah. like bar. Mm-hmm. So, of course, we have Dorian Gray's that gets like real wild and kinky after dark. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, my. All right. That's cool. So much after dark content. <laughs> There's a lot of after dark. Well, the show is the show's not for kids, you know? I mean... If, no. I, I I don't imagine many like seven year olds who are just huge fans of the 1940s Archie comics and they're like, <laughs> oh boy, uh, oh I want to be Archie, bring me, yeah, that right, would, it'd be oh, it'd be hard. <laughs> it'd be interesting for sure. I I do notice that uh, Larissa made a note here, and I remember you bringing this up that you thought return guests. So if you have like a park pass, that you can run for class president. Oh, cool. <laughs> Wow. Okay. And then that gives you like special abilities to manipulate certain things or change the dress code where serpents aren't allowed in the building anymore. Or like Mm -hmm. you could make some impact where different uh, types of people have different abilities like that. Absolutely. And we could do a similar thing over in Greendale, but I don't think it'd be running for president. It would be like, what's, Head boy the, or something. I, I know that's Harry Potter, but they do something similar in Greendale. They do, but then they also have like yeah. the person who is basically like the headmaster of the 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 Academy of Unseen Arts. Did I get it right this time? Mm-hmm. Yes. Score. Was that almost yeah. a spit take? Because she got yes, it, right? it was. Oh man. <laughs> I like that. Or or you could be you know just like the top serpent or you know mm-hmm. like each serpent of those king. different groups. Yeah, yeah the oh, serpent king or queen. Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. where you can call the shots a little bit more um that's really yeah. cool hmm, hmm, hmm. you could even do like certain events maybe just from i don't know 4 p.m to 5 p.m there's an event where you kind of go back to your subgroups like hideout or whatever all the riverdale yeah. kids go back to riverdale high and they do something together like a little i don't know mixer or whatever <laughs> but like <laughs> Just everyone kind like of a, retreats a school back. dance. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's really cute. I mean, it might be weird, of course. Like, if you're just there with your mom and you're a little kid, you don't want to like split them up, of course. But it'd be kind of cool if you there was a call to return back to your tribe, and you guys mm-hmm. can either solve like a mystery that's just within you know we know there's 
a mole within the serpents or whatever. Right. There's like some kind of little challenge you do with this new group, and then you can reunite with your your gang with your newfound experience and access mm-hmm. to whatever. It sounds cool. It's a it's a cool world, and I, I think we've threaded the needle pretty well between um, just going there to watch Archie because he's so hot, and um, <laughs> going there to actually be Archie. Like I think we've done something nice where it's like you get to live in the world and sort of be of the world, but not necessarily one of the named characters. Oh, I like that. That was very well said. Uh, mm-hmm. eh, well, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. I I really like the way that this turned out. In other in other words, mm. um, any other things we need to make sure we hit before we get out of here? Well, uh, I mean, I. Again, I could just list a bunch of places that I want to exist in both worlds, but you can just kind of assume that I want all the places to exist. <laughs> yeah, um, but what is some locations online somewhere? You can an- read that. Another thing that's very important to me: both high schools, the high school in Greendale and the high school in Riverdale, have these lounges oh, for wow, the students. Right. So, yes, and these lounges must exist (laughs) Mm -hmm. yeah no you're totally right and and i don't know how we would do this but i do remember us talking about thinking that it would be neat if there was like some sort of secret passage that in fact connected these two lounges um but but you'd have to like work to find the secret passage we're not just going to give that to you it would have to be in the fireplace come on (laughs) Spoiler alert. Well, oh sure, but you'd God. have to like do something to like get it to open up and all yeah, of that, yeah. you know. Yes. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah, and you, you could got... you could lay out the park so that the two schools kind of connect together before the start of the river or somewhere where it's not going to look conspicuous, but there is actually a secret passage or maybe a couple secret passages or like mm-hmm. a way of getting across the river if you are afraid of water and you don't want to take the boat across, you oh, can. Sure, sure go the other way you know there's like a, a more i don't know uh accessible route that you can take to cross and over if you use a secret passageway to get from riverdale to greendale or vice versa and you never step foot on the riverboat you get to keep your powers from one side to the other side whoa, whoa. next level okay that's <laughs> So that's like your second day in the park, maybe you try to figure that out or yeah. your second time visiting. Mm-hmm. And then eventually you can run for class president. Like that takes a lot of little <laughs> hoops you have to jump through. But mm-hmm. oh, that's that's a cool idea. Wow. Yeah. And maybe, oh man, that's that's really cool. I love that idea. Mm-hmm. That adds like another little nuance. Mm-hmm. I mean, we're already traveling through space and time here, of course. <laughs> right, right. That gives us another way of doing it. Uh, in a single continuity. Yeah. Wow. I know we probably have to wrap up, but I just had a thought that I wanted to throw out there, which is uh, I don't like, obviously parents should not be coming with like their five-year-old because I don't know what their five-year-old would like do in our, our theme park. <laughs> if Thank if you. there was like a large demographic for this sort of thing, we would figure it out. What I more imagine are like parents coming with their teens. Yeah. Or maybe they're tweens, which we could work with. And then there would be a whole section that would be parent focused. Totally. Because Riverdale does that, right? Yes. Yeah. Where it's like all office. about like. Yeah. And the- <laughs> mm-hmm. That's the really cool. Seasons, There's the there are missions for the adults versus for the teenagers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. And that like you can either work together or work against each other. Like Veronica and her mom, I never seeing eye to eye. But like Sabrina's always getting help from her aunts. Oh, that's really cool. And that's a reason when when you're with your party where you would want to actually split up as if you're a teenager with mm-hmm. your parents. You're like, okay, you guys go do your thing. We're going to go do our thing and meet some other teenagers. Like, I don't yeah. know. That's always fun. Like, we went on a cruise when I was a kid, like a teenager. And, like, the coolest thing was, like, there are teen activities. Oh, my gosh. This is so cool. My parents <laughs> don't have to go to this, but I'm not going to get kidnapped either. So it's awesome. <laughs> and you're yeah. on a boat. Right. It's what are they going to do? And fun. Wonderful. (laughs) Yeah, it's an odd alchemy there that they can make on a cruise ship because it's not cool in any other context, I think, to go to teen activities that your parents recommend. But yeah, a cruise ship, it's kind of cool. Or at a theme park. Right. Yeah. We'll just have to like have some rules against kidnapping or something, and that solves the problem. We're going to have excellent lodge security, (laughs) (laughs) the lodge prison. All lost children go to the lodge prison. (laughs) 
pick up your lost children there. <laughs> wow. And that's what you do with your five-year-old. Like, you just kind of drop them off on your way in. And... <laughs> Here you go. It's at, the, it's at the Lodge prison, but inside it's, like, very nice. They're, like, age-appropriate, developmentally stimulating activities for them to do. It'll be great. Perfect. Or that's just the school. That's Riverdale right. Elementary School. Oh, that's that would have been a much better choice. <laughs> I, I right. Maybe they have a children's prison. I don't know. <laughs> I'm so sorry, parents. <laughs> Someone would stop us before this was actually made, of course. This is just <laughs> brainstorming. We're, we're allowed right. to go through. Right. <laughs> We'd go through like an extensive vetting process. <laughs> yes, their lawyers have to sign off on all of this. <laughs> like Jurassic Park. We know how that went. <laughs> oh, <laughs> You're right. Yep. <laughs> Fictional lawyers have signed off on a lot of bad ideas. You're mm-hmm. right probably real ideas i don't want to get too much into that but uh (laughs) yeah well larissa justine thank you so much for being on the show that was that was a blast thank you so much for having us that was really fun yeah thank you so much my pleasure and if the listener wants to find your show or learn more about you guys where can they go to do that you can find our podcast on itunes as well as spotify and we're working Mm -hmm. on getting up on the other platforms so keep an eye out Um, if you want to know what i am up to you can always catch me on the social media at mind body fandom because i take a holistic approach to healing mind body and fandom and you can check out my website blueboxcounseling.com wonderful Yes, and we do have a very killer Instagram presence for which the captain is almost wholly responsible for. Um, and that is, it's just at Starship, at Starship Therapies, right? On the gram? Therapies with an S, even though I did figure out. Our Insta is Starship underscore Therapies. And remember that Therapies has an S, not a Z, just like the Enterprise. Oh, that's oh. what you're going for. Yes. It's a Star Trek reference. Oh, my <laughs> God. I'm so dumb right now. No, no, no. Don't feel bad. Because when I was setting up all of our accounts, I spelled it with a Z because I thought that was just more, you know, intuitive and organic. And the captain really read me the riot act because I literally spelled it wrong and everything. And I had to go back and redo it. So it happens to the best of us, including wow. crew members. <laughs> Friends, if you want to find me and for some reason you don't want to find the captain, you can find me on Twitter at Spock's All Ears. I'm going to be real with y'all, though. I'm not great at the Twitter. It is on my list of things to improve on in my own bullet journal. Um, mm. So if you want to follow me there, you can. And then you can you know, be with me on the, my journey to embrace Twitter once again. Well, that is a great invitation. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. I would love to do another episode with you guys, though, in the future. I know you've got a lot of fandoms that you're into, and that is uh, what Finding a Guest mm-hmm. is all about. Someone who's really eloquent and passionate and likes <laughs> specific genre stuff. So, yeah, in the future, feel free to reach out. Uh, we'd, we'd love to do another episode. Or I'd... Oh, we def will. This was a blast. Mm-hmm. It was a blast. So much fun. Thank you so much for your time, and have a good night. Thank you. Live long and prosper. (laughs) Awesome.